another... I'm going to go inside. It's all good. It's all good being outside. I think everyone can see us. But uh, welcome. We're live. We're live on YouTube. Lydia's here with me. Hello. Hello. I might just go to Yama's room, actually. Because no one's in there. Just, are there? So, you know. Um, I'm currently away from home. I'm not at home. If you gather that by the first center pop in here. Which is... Uh, yeah. I'm going to close the door behind me. It means I've got a nice bit of uh, private space to yam. To yammer, and I've actually got a nice little setup here. I can go, I can go on this chair, and uh, maybe I can even prop you up, and then you'll still be able to hear us. Sorry, it's a bit all, all over the place. Um, essentially, I was trying to stream on my computer, and there's nothing working. Absolutely nothing working. I, I hoped I'd be able to do it abroad, but it is what it is. But I know, um, I definitely want to make a record of of who I actually think will be going through. Um, and instead of a spreadsheet, I've I've got um, all of them printed out here. It's my score sheet, so I'll be making lots of notes here anyway. But I, for the general, most of it I remember off by heart where they need to be. So, um, yeah, sorry, it's a bit of a shaky start. It'd be a bit weird, but at least you'll get the information you deserve. And it should be no longer 30 minutes because I actually have to dash and do 50 other things. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, um, first of all, uh, 25 countries participating. It's at 8 p.m. on BBC One if you're in the UK. I don't know where it is in other countries, but um, it'll be 8 p.m. GMT or British Standard Time now, uh, BST for, for you. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's 25 countries, like I said, all of the countries have been here, including the Big Five, and I did want to talk about the Big Five, because I haven't talked about any of them yet. Um, and also give you my prediction on who I think will come last, who will win the competition, my top five, and I'll generally just give my points along the way. So I think we should just jump into it. Um, if you don't know any of the other qualifiers and you don't want this to be spoiled, go and watch the qualifiers, but you're pretty late, so just watch this anyway. Okay. So, <clears throat> Turin 2022, here we go. First up is Czech Republic, and I think they did a fantastic job on, on their semi-final work. I think this is a fantastic way to open the competition. It's not one that's going to win. It's one that's just really just a good time. Um, the song itself is fantastic. I think she sings really well. She was a little bit gravelly in the semis, but uh, hopefully um, D Dominica can, or whatever her name is, uh, can pull it back. Um, I just think the light show in this one is absolutely phenomenal, and I think it really sets the mood for Eurovision in terms of like how crazy this, this show can get. So I'm looking forward to all my friends um, seeing this one. Um, next up is, uh, sorry, I, sorry, I predict that sort of mid table, maybe even lower mid table. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do any damage to the top end, but um, I don't know, I see this around like 20, 15th place sort of, sort of area. And I think it'll be a respectable performance. Um, next up is Romania and the song is called Lamame with WRS. Um, again, a bit of a weird one. I, I don't think many people thought it would go through, but it, it did a really, really good job. And I think it was my biggest improved on the night. Um, WRS is, is performing for the second position, which is historically the, the worst position to be in in Eurovision. It's never won. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a good song. It's a really good start. Um, it's a bit weird that we've gone for two high intensity songs right off the bat. Normally we dumb it down and we show you some, some weirder ones, but you know, I think just how with the running order, how it's going, they just had to do it this way. So Romania was up next. Um, yeah, pretty good song, I think. Again, another sort of mid-table, lower mid-table sort of song. Nothing that's going to reach reach any any top position at all. But um, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, third up is Portugal. This is my third position. It's actually my third favourite song this year. Um, the song is called Soldade, Soldade, and the song singer rock, uh, is called Amaro. Uh, she's performing on stage with her friends. Um, sort of like a choir circle sort of thing i just think the song is beautiful it's one of my favorites from this year obviously the the, the song itself is just fantastic um i really do think that you know if, if um if it wasn't so early on it would have a bit more of an impact to be honest third is like a really hard position to to, to play from um genuinely uh judging from what it's around and that it's really early on i just don't see this getting much votes at all i'm, I'm seeing this bottom five which is really unfortunate because i really do love this song um, and I think people might save it, but you know won't won't really vote for it, and that, and that makes sense. I should say as well, if you get the Eurovision app, you can vote for twenty up to twenty of these artists. I think for free. I'm not too sure. So download the Eurovision app now, so you're ready to go for that, and then you definitely be able to vote for your favorite go through. I'm going to vote for Portugal personally, even before we've even seen it, unless she has like an absolute mare, um, just because I think she deserves some votes from us in the UK. Next up is Finland, which is the Rasmus, and they're singing a song called Jezebel. Now, this was a bit of a shock qualifier. It was the first one up, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take back what I said. I, I honestly thought that maybe um, it, it was a it was just off, like the entire song. The, the person just the main singer just couldn't sing. Well, I watched it back, and the last minute or so, or two minutes or so, was actually quite good, especially uh, from 
the lead up to the solo, the solo itself, and then like everyone singing like Jezebel is just is is a just a crazy. I mean, religious connotations aside, I think just a fantastic song, and I think they really do rock the stage. Um, he just needs to sort out singing for the first bit. Um, where will I see Finn come? Hmm. I guess it's another low mid like low mid table. I mean, all of these songs this year are really good, and there's only a couple that are completely outlier. So they could all fall in between like twentieth and and sixth or something like that. Ridiculous sort of numbers. Um, I guess if I, if I would, it'd be easier for me to divide it into thirds, really. So I see this as a second third. So what was twenty five? Um, like. I don't know, eighth down to sixteenth or or seventeenth or eighteenth sort of area. Um, that's that's the sort of. So if I say second, that's what I mean. If I mean bottom half, I, uh, bottom third, I mean the bottom third and top third, top third. Cool. So yeah, I think this will belong in the second third. Uh, fifth up is Switzerland, and the song is called "Boys Do Cry," and it's by a man called Marius Bear. Now again, I thought this was a bit of a shock qualifier as well, and if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, while the story is fantastic, it is early on again. Um, not too sure how much of an impact it will make. I just, yeah, I'm going to put this in, in the lower half. Um, definitely in the lower half, I think, maybe even in the lower third. But again, all these songs are great. I don't think any of them deserve a last place, actually. So, yeah, this is a really hard one to, to predict. Next up is Norway with Subwoofer, which is probably the weirdest one to, to have so far. Um Norway is actually a, a sensation, and I think it will be a difficult decision of whether it will be in the top third or in the middle third. I think this is a high-impact song. Oh, I've, I've completely skipped France, my bad. <laughs> Sixth up is France. I'll talk about Norway, and I'll come back to France. So, so Norway, um, yeah, I see them as a top third, sort of middle third sort of song. And France, I don't know. I, at first listen, I thought it was fantastic, but then I've heard, been hearing the singing, I've been hearing the vocals, and to be perfectly honest, I think France... Apparently I disconnected, reconnected. Um, sorry if the Wi-Fi goes all weird. Um, but yeah, I see France in that bottom third sort of area. Um, not really. It's too early on for that high of an impact. And I think if it was at the end or near the end, I think it would definitely have more of an impact. And I, you can get get a general feeling of how these songs will perform, but they're based on whether and what the people on um, what the um, what position the organizers have put decided to put them in. Because putting them at sixth is like a bit rough. So, so yeah, I don't see it doing that well. Yeah, I've said about Norway. Armenia, Snap, which is, which is a really good song by Rosalind. Um, it's a hard one. A lot of these more gentle ballads um, in, a, in a sea full of ballads will probably struggle. And, and you have to imagine that. I think about 16 or, or 15 of these songs are like ballads and, and really soft songs. So you just have to be... You have, it's, it's an oversaturated market, really, and... and People are more likely to vote for a stronger one than a weaker one if 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 the genres are the same. If they're different, you might see people vote for weaker songs because it's the only one of that genre. But yeah, so I mean, I, again, I see them in the bottom third. I think she isn't going to have that high of an impact, I'm afraid, but we'll, we'll see. Um, then we get into a bit of a bloodbath from 9th to 12th. We have Italy, Spain, Netherlands and Ukraine. Um Three of these countries have predicted top five and all four have been predicted top ten. So it's a pretty crazy sort of streak of people here. So Italy is Brividi and the song is, Mah uh, sorry, the song's called Brividi and the artists are Mahmoud and Blanco. And I think in terms of song, it's one of the best ones this year. Definitely top five. Um, the performance is a little bit on the shaky side. I, I would have expected it to be a little cleaner. Um, but the staging itself, the way they act around the stage, they clearly have a stage presence and they're used to doing songs like this and, and with crowds like this. And they're absolutely loving it. And I think that um, their emotion really does come across. So I definitely see this top 10 without a shadow of a doubt. Even coming up to top five, I, I think it really could do quite well. Um, the only issue with it is that it follows Spain. Or is it it's before Spain? It's before Spain. Now, Spain has been kind of in the in the background as a small dark horse not doing too well and then suddenly out of nowhere um completely risen up the ranks everyone's absolutely fallen in love with it they've seen how how good she is at singing just generally um and everyone's just decided to fall in love with her at the same time um this the, the, it, the song is just it's great the performance is fantastic she does a really good job um and yeah i just think it's a really high impact performance um there's not much I can really fault it with. I think Spain has finally got a 
a brilliant song that they can be proud of, much like the UK. Um, and yeah, that was really, really good. I'm, I'm glad to see Spain is, is coming back and doing these sorts of songs. Um, I would, I would, yeah, I mean, certainly top 10, 100% top 10. I think it will get top five. I think I think they they will just do it because they follow a soft song in Italy and then the next song after that is another soft song in Netherlands. And I say soft as in the tone is soft, not that it's a bad song. But speaking of the Netherlands, number 11 is the Netherlands. Um, it's Sen, I found it in the end. It's not S10, it's Sen um, with the song Dear Dear. Um, following after Spain, there's going to be a bit of a vacuum, I'm afraid. I think any other sort of position, the Netherlands might do quite a good job. But the, the unfortunate part is that it just follows a lot of big songs and then the one after it is a potential winner so yeah this is going to get lost a little bit i find i still think it will get some good votes um you know i think it will do relatively okay i don't think i see it in the bottom half at all sorry in the bottom third but i do see in that second third sort of area between like eighth and 16th so we'll see what happens there um i'll make a post about all these predictions later on and then in, in writing and then you can see it a bit easier 12th up is Ukraine with Stefania by Kalush Orchestra. And, I mean, there's not much to be said about this one. I think we, the, the bookies and everyone just generally has, has seen the song as the winner. Um, and I don't think it's particularly, like, poorly deserved. I think the song itself, the way they sing it, the, the staging, the story that's being told, everything about it is so deserving of that winner, like, trophy. Um I'll explain my thoughts right at the end about how I feel about everything to do with this competition. But yeah, I, I think the song is, is quality. Whether it's a winning song or not, I mean, if you saw these like out of order and you didn't think about the Ukrainian war, would you say this one deserved to win? Definitely fifth, definitely sixth, sort of fourth area. Maybe not win, but I think it wouldn't shock anyone. And that's the thing. I, I think it's deserved. Um, yeah, and if, and if they do go on to win it, then good for them. But yeah, yeah, my voice is so tired. Oh my god! Right, so following that absolute bloodbath, we have Germany. Now I haven't given my thoughts on Germany yet. It's a song called "Rock Stars." It's by Malik Harris. Um, he is um, a great storyteller. I think the song itself is just so um, genuine and heartwarming. I think the words are so clever. The way he he changed the words to to mean two different things while saying the exact same words. It's like I was feeling like a nobody. And now I'm feeling like I know nobody. It's like that sort of vibe of like, wow, that's only one slight change yet. It has a completely different meaning. Um, and yeah, I just feel like it's really from his heart. I don't know if it's something that he's been struggling with or if he's talking about other people. But yeah, th this is just a, a, a beautiful song. And, for, and, and the staging is great. I mean, everything is going for this. Like everything is just great. But it's a bit of one of those like, it's a kind of like a UK song from, from the years by of like, it's really good. But it's just not enough. And there's no... There is a high impact moment, though. It just follows Ukraine. <laughs> and honestly, um, yeah, a bit rough. I think in this period, we're getting into a bit of a, a lull. So we've had a, a massive high with Italy, Spain, Ukraine. Now we're going Germany. And now we have Lithuania, who I feel will struggle a little bit. I've given my thoughts on Lithuania before. I think her, her qualification was quite a surprise. But I'm, I'm happy that she managed to make it. Um, she was happy to promote Lithuanian language, which was... Um, definitely a, a, a big big moment um the song is called sentimente and it's by monica liu um staging again i think is really beautiful i just think that um the whole package as a whole is just not enough compared to these other ones i think i'll get some votes i think um lithuania has a lot of friends in, in eurovision that, that might give them some votes in the juries but um nothing to, to tempt the top top 10 or anything like that i would say very low um middle third um, maybe even the top of the bottom third, I would say, for Lithuania. Um, same story, I'm afraid, for Azerbaijan, Fade to Black by Nadir Rustamali. Uh, his, um, I will take back again what I said about the vocals. He did, uh, it was only a little bit of a hiccup, and I think I overanalyzed it a little bit. His, his singing is just fantastic. Um, I think he needs to work on the quieter parts of the song. Hopefully that really does amplify, because I think a lot of people block out the quiet stuff generally, and... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. What have we heard already so far? I think, like, Italy, maybe Netherlands, maybe even Switzerland, someone has already voted for. And I think by that point, we just, this is another one to get to the next few. 
um, might do quite well. I, I gen genuinely think upper bottom third, maybe lower bottom third. Um, but yeah, I don't see it tempting anywhere near the top ranks. Belgium is now up next in number 16th place um, with Jeremy Marcassi. I think that's how you say his name, with the song Miss You. Um, Belgium had a, a really good time, really good performance. Um, you can tell it wasn't as, as high, like high intensity as it could be. The song itself renders a lot more impact than what he gave on stage. Um, so I do hope that he amplifies that a little bit more. Um, again, I see this sort of in the middle middle third, really. Not, not really tempting anywhere high ranks. But um, I think this is the, the last of the sort of okay ones. And from this point onwards, we're going to see some really heavy hitters. And I think they did this on purpose with the order, just to make it super exciting. So, number 17 is Greece, with Amanda Tenford, and she sings um, Die Together. And, yeah. Definitely top 10. 100% top 10. Um, just quality performance all around. Her singing is fantastic. The staging is um, very intriguing. It's not exactly, like, amazing. It's just really interesting. Um, I think the cinematography, as I've said before, is just fantastic. Um, and I really do hope that she do, she does well. I, th I think she deserves it. Um, she's a quite young singer and it would really do amazing to her career. I definitely see it top 10. Um, it'll be interesting to see where Greece's vo votes go. Normally they vote for Cyprus, so I wonder where they'll go this time. But yeah, that is quite a, quite a song. I definitely think top 10. Um, will it win? No, I don't think it will win, but it, it is definitely up there. Um, a bit of a lull then after that big performance in Iceland, but I think that it actually renders quite well. So we've had a very impactful, like, powerful song, and now we're moving into a very reflective sort of mood. Um, and I think it's just a nice, calming song. Um, the song is, is, is called Med Hakan Gasol, which is by Sister. Sorry if I've murdered that. Um, I just think it's so calming. I think it's a really lovely staging. The, the harmonies that they work with are just fantastic, and I... I think they deserve way more points than I think they'll get, but um, hopefully they hit hit the middle third, if not the left-hand side of the board. But um, to be perfectly honest, I see this bottom of the middle third, top of the middle, top of the um, bottom third. And finally, oh, not finally, but um, finally for what I would say were the iffy songs is Moldova, with Trenyul, um and it's Stop and Stup, Stop and Stup, and the Adonov Brothers. Um, wow. Uh, complete change around from where I thought they would be at the start of the semi-final after seeing the semi-final it's just absolutely fantastic and this is going to get everybody dancing right this is just a fantastically happy song and I through the entire of this sort of um, running order you can definitely feel there's a story being told we've gone from Greece which is like heartbreak to then Iceland which is like repairing and then Moldova is like a party time of like enjoying yourself now that you've moved on I think there's so many stories in this like competition um but yeah, like, really exploded. Um, we might see a bit of a, hmm, Ukraine to 2008 sort of vibe of, excuse me, like a cult classic sort of going on here. Hey ho, let's go will be like a, a coined phrase that everyone uses, of, like in Eurovision. And I, I, I do see this being coming a cult classic. I hope that it makes a top 10. I, it's a bit of a weird dark horse. It won't win, I don't think, but it's really, really strong. And um, yeah, do not forget about Moldova. Really, really strong performance. 20th then, and we're going into a sea of the strongest singers in this competition. Oh boy, here we go. Sweden, Australia, United Kingdom, and Poland. And kind of technically Serbia, and Estonia, to end it off. It's just all a bit crazy. Please look at the camera. No, I will never look at the camera, Dad. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. If I look at the camera, it's just weird. I'm just offset. I, I'm, this is all very off the bat anyway. So, Sweden. Just hold me closer. Um... Ukraine has winner vibes, Spain has winner vibes, and Sweden definitely has winner vibes. Um, such a strong performance. I think that the staging is so impactful and striking and, like, just incredible, really. Uh, there's not much to say about it, really, that I haven't said already in the second semi-final. Recap. Um, apparently she hits a winner's note, according to some of the press, which is one of those notes where you're like, okay, this is fantastic. Um, I think this is just a, like I said, a fantastic performance, and there's not much to be said about it. It's definitely top 10. Um, if it's not top 10, I'd be very worried. Um, but yeah, could it win? Yes, it very, very much could win. I think this is one that could overtake Ukraine. Um, 
in terms of votes and uh, along with Spain. Um, yeah, really, really strong performance. Okay, I've got about 10 minutes or 5 minutes left now. So, Australia. Um, best vocalist in the competition in number 21 in the person of Sheldon Riley and not the same. I mean, in my personal opinion, the song itself and the staging is, is okay. It's just not... Hmm. It's just a bit repetitive and a tiny bit on the boring side. The thing that is carrying this song is him. He is infectious. His his mask, that when he takes it off, um, when he sings that, you know, when he just sings all the notes of this song, it's absolutely perfect. There's a point where he breaks breaks it down and he starts, like, talking almost. Just everything about him is carrying this performance, but I'm afraid that the song and the staging is just not. The staging is interesting, and, and the song is interesting. It's just where this positions amongst the rest and as a whole package itself it's not a whole package it's just a fantastic singer so i again i see top 10 i do but um it'd be a bit of a also i've just seen this what does this do does this join someone oh whatever oh it gives me some filters okay you know what oh i don't want to stop streaming no 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 i'm gonna stop playing around i'm just gonna finish this okay so yeah that's australia i, th I think definitely higher the bottom third uh, of the sorry higher of the middle third or, or maybe even top 10 um yeah i wish them the best of luck honestly i wish them the best of luck. it's so hard to predict this this year there's not it's not so clear cut and number 22nd is us in the united kingdom and the song is called spaceman and it's by sam Ryder, the tiktok sensation um there's not there's not enough words that can describe what this song means to me. It's my personal winner, um, which I've never put the UK as a winner before. I've never even put the UK in the top ten before. Um, I might have done, but but probably disingenuously. This one, I genuinely it, it is my favorite song this year, which is crazy. Um, and I thought it was bias at first. I thought it was just home bias, but no, it, it is genuinely my favorite. The performance is just fantastic. It's just, it's just out of this world. <laughs> Get it, spaceman? <laughs> out of the world. Um, I don't want to ruin anything about it, but there are a few surprises, and he himself is a fantastic singer. I heard his jury performance. Apparently, it was perfect. It was the best he's done, and if he can replicate that on the televoting night, although it won't get as many votes in televoting, I see as the um, jury vote. I still think it will do fantastic. Let me put it this way: if it gets lower than fifteenth position. We can we can blame Europe for being a bit biased against for being biased against us. If it even gets below top ten, I feel I feel we should um, have an ask <laughs> because it's just um, this this performance is so strong. I don't want to talk too much about it. I might accidentally slip what happens in the song. Um, so I'm just going to say sit back and enjoy at number twenty two. And if you're not from the UK and you're watching this, please do vote. Um, I just think we have a fantastic song this year, and he's so lovable and amazing, and just so iconic as well. And it's my winner. Can it win? Can it win? I hand on my heart confidently say that if this wins, no one will be annoyed. Except the people who vote for other countries, obviously. But I don't think anyone could turn around and say, how did that win? And I, and I think that's sometimes what you have to do, is you have to work from backwards of like saying... If this won, would I be mad? No. And and I genuinely wouldn't be mad as as the as a trying to be super even with everything. So I think this definitely has a winner vibe as well. And if it wins, I mean <laughs> Manchester twenty twenty three is what everyone's saying. So who knows? Who knows? But yeah, can't wait. Cool. Um anyway, last one last three now. So we have Poland in twenty three, which is uh sorry, the last three. Twenty three is Poland. Um, with the song River, um, and the man who sings it is called Ackman. Now, there's been comments about we've had Australia, and we've had United Kingdom, and we've had Poland. These are three super strong male singers in a row. Is this going to affect all of them? And I think, naturally, when you're when you're put to similar looking songs, that can affect your vote, right, or votes for you. I think if you're a high impact song and you're put in between two ballads and two boring songs, naturally you're going to be a lot stronger. So I do think that the organisers have put us between Australia and Poland have have definitely, it, it looks meditated because it, it just seems too too obvious. But 
let me put it this way. Um, Sam Ryder's package, in terms of him, his, his costume, his staging, his voice, what he does in the song, does it have a winner vibe, is way more than both of these songs. And I'm going to talk about Perlin now, because I think it's still a very good song, and it's very high on the odds. And I, I'm, I don't really see why it's so high on the odds. There's a point where he starts like singing, and I... Um, and he, and he hits it almost perfectly. There's a point where he sort of cries out. Um, but for me, the effects are over the top and, and cheesy. And um, I just, I'm not, it's a good performance, but it's just not for me. And to be honest, I, I see this coming middle third. I don't really, after seeing the UK and seeing Sweden, I don't see why people would vote for Poland over those two. And even Australia, I think. I think seeing Australia first, then Poland, you might lose. I think it'll just. I don't. It don't. We won't win. It won't win. I'm afraid. A lot of people are the same. Maybe winner, but no, not for me. Um, I see it as just middle third. It's the box down the middle third. And it follows Serbia, which is number twenty-four. Uh, Constructor Incorporsano. Now. I didn't rate this super highly, and a lot of people I've talked to have gone like, "It's a bit weird," but I like it. There's been a lot of talk about Serbia. A lot of talk. It's right near the end. It follows three male singers, and so a female singer. It's pretty crazy. I just, yeah. It could win. It really could win. And that's crazy. That's crazy for me. Um, it's a very good song. I really enjoy the message. I really enjoy the, the show as itself. Um... The staging could be the tiniest bit better. I think they're failed by that black sun being in the background, and I think they really could have gone to town if it was a full LED screen. Um, but for the performance work, from what I've seen so far, it's really good. It's really good. Following Poland, or coming after Poland, should I say, just really strong. Um, it's either going to be top ten or middle third. I mean, or even top five. And it, it, it one of the people have been talking about it overtaking Ukraine as well. So. You know, winner vibes as well. And yeah, I, I just think top 10. Find me Estonia, number 25. And it's unfortunate for him because he's actually got a really good song. And he's on right at the end after an absolute <laughs> bloodbath of of um, of people. Uh, the, he's a, such a clean performance. Um, the way he interacts with the crowd is fantastic. Um, it even gives me winner vibes, which is crazy because it's like, I never saw that coming. I do, it won't win, but it, it's, it's got like a quality of it that's like, this is really, really good. And I think people will fall in love with this. And it's a good way to end. There's always hope. Um, you know, the future will always be our hope. And, and it does see off the competition very well. So I'm glad that that's how it's ending. And yeah, there we go. That's my final um, run through. So there's the whole, whole list. I don't know how much of that you can see, if it's reversed or not. I, I have no idea. Everyone enjoy the evening? Yes, indeed. Everyone who's watching it live, who's watching it later on. Um, hope you really do enjoy the evening. Personal prediction, I think Ukraine will win it. I think that's that goes without saying. But if not Ukraine, I genuinely think the UK have a chance. I think Spain has a really, really awesome go at it. Italy, although being high in the odds, I don't think has a winner chance. But we'll see. Um, I think Sweden has a chance. So I, I'm going to say my top five, and this is personal order, is... UK, Sweden, Spain, Ukraine, Portugal. Randomly Portugal is in there, but Portugal is my random pick. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, and for more thoughts on all the other songs that uh, <laughs> it was right around. Woo, it was right around. Um, hope you all enjoyed the evening, like, like my dad says in the chat. Um, and yeah, hopefully... Well, I'll see you all after at some point, I'm sure. It's been a bit hectic here. We're, we're making Italian food and just enjoying our evening, and it's been a lot of setup. And I just can't wait to see the UK win. No, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, hope you all have a lovely rest of the evening. Enjoy Eurovision. And yeah, we'll see you either next year or later on for the review. See you later. Bye.